Hi guys, welcome. Thank you so much for coming this evening. Uh, my name is Alan Hallett. I'm the superintendent. I thank you guys so much for being here. Um, I actually get excited about these. Most of the time you get excited about these evenings because it's a great opportunity for us to really get to share our hearts, give you guys a big overview. So tonight's goal is to kind of give you a big overview, basic overview financially, where we're at, talk a little bit about tuition, vision uh, for the future, where we're going, I'll introduce a few people this evening, etc. Let me give it just a couple house cleaning things out of the way and then we'll pray. Um, first, you guys did get the t new tuition. It is printed incorrectly. That is tuition for 2023-24. Okay, so it is this year and next year. That is the new tuition. You guys are the first ones who are getting to see that. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. I just wanted to make sure I corrected that since we printed the wrong date or wrong uh, at, what is that, calendar years on the top of that, okay? So those are the new ones. Um, let's pray, and then I'll do a few introductions and we'll get going. My goal is to have you guys out of here in an hour. Um, and But I will stick around at the end to uh, answer any other questions that aren't, aren't uh, answered earlier. Father, thank you so much for tonight. God, we continue to give you back this school. Father, it's not ours, it's yours, and we want your will to be done. So we ask your presence be here. We want to see lives impacted and changed. We want to see disciples that are raised up, and we want to walk in partnership with these families. So I pray that you just give us your wisdom, grace, and your hand of blessing over here the school. Your spirit would move and touch lives in a significant way. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, just a couple introductions. Um, we do have a couple board members here, Dwayne Gray. Uh, just so you guys see some faces that you know, and then our board president, Michael Papik, is also here. Uh, introduce those. Um, if you guys would just quickly stand, you don't need to give them, they don't want you to clap for them anyway. They don't really want me to even recognize them or you know that they're here, but I think it's good for you guys to see their faces. Um, our CFO is here as well, and Brett Molman uh, is sitting up here. And I know there's a few directors here. Uh, let's see, Wade Hammond is our director of development. Um, Keena Ritchie is our director, where is she, of advancement. She's back there waving. She's just, we just call her the party. That's her job. Um, <laughs> David Ains is our director of IT in, in the back. Uh, Connor Jackson is our athletic director, all, all the way in our back, which is usually what he's doing in athletics, trying to watch everything. Um, if you did, hopefully you met Lori on the way in. She's my administrative assistant and pretty much runs and directs me all the time. So that's really what her job is as far as directing goes. She directs me. And uh, who else is here? Well, of course, you guys both know it's Shelly and Vicki. Uh, Shelly Crager and Vicki Jones, of course, they have the front row seats. And did I miss anyone that is here that I didn't recognize? Just so you guys see faces. Oh, Eric, yeah. And then our director of facility and safety, Eric Abig, is up here uh, in the front as well. And uh, he's up here as a parent. So in my mind, I'm like, ah, he's up here as a parent. So I appreciate you guys being here uh, so much. And uh, we'll give you guys opportunities throughout the night so that you know exactly what, what's going on. I've got one hand out here. I've got to turn the pages and advance the screen. So we'll see how well I do. I have just realized I probably am one thumb short of getting this all done. All right. First, if you'd scan this, um, it is the large one, not the little one. The little one's for the secondary meeting. I'll make it bigger. That'll take you directly to be able to ask questions as we go through, okay? Uh, we do this really to facilitate. So if there's multiple questions as well as, and I've got two people that are watching back there and they're th waving at me. I also have it up on my tablet screen up here. Um, I will look for both. Pr you might ask a question that I'm going to answer. I'll wait till then. And if there are not questions that are answered at the end, you can come and ask me. There might be some that I think are probably more done in private. Just so you guys know, I will kind of screen those and make sure that we do answer those questions. We'll also summate these questions, and we will send them out to parents so that people see the questions and answers so that everyone understands what's going on. Now, we don't tell people that don't come here tonight. We do record it, but we do not live stream it. We will send it out probably next week for those that were not able to attend so that they're able to see that. Okay? All right. Yes, this is going to be interesting. One more hand is what I need. Our purpose is the only reason we exist is to serve Jesus Christ by developing the whole person through a Christ-centered education. I read this. This is something we read before every single board meeting. And Michael Papik puts it on our agenda every single time, and we read it because... One of our major goals is to make sure that we're staying true to our purpose, our mission, and our values, which is what I'm going to read the next two with. This isn't going to work. Mission. Partnering with Christian families to shepherd and challenge students toward their individual potential to impact the world for Christ. And I, I wrote a few things I, I want to read specifically because I think they're important. We believe that God gave parents the responsibility to educate their children. Therefore, we are serving parents by providing an education that aligns with their beliefs, with your beliefs and your values. We're not in, in replacement for the church, but a supplement support in partnership with the church for the equipping of young people. 
That's what we believe is, our, is, is part of what partnership means. Shepherding and challenging. These two significant verbs create the foundation of our discipleship philosophy. We believe in knowing each student as individual cre- creations of the Lord. We love our students and guide them along their path. Additionally, we must know our students well enough to challenge them beyond their comfort level. Each student, as we're talking about individual potential, has been gifted by God according to his plan. Therefore, each student has their own unique potential. The only way we can unlock that potential is to know each student and the student's families. It's our goal that every student be shepherded and challenged to reach their individual potential. We don't care where their strengths and weaknesses are. We want them to grow and reach their individual potential. Not one size fits all, not to teach to the average, but to impact and touch each one of them where they're at. That's our goal. And then finally, for sure, to impact the world for Christ. And you guys probably hear me say that over and over, and you will continue to hear me say that over and over and over. Core values. To reflect Christ's character in these three things, grace, truth, and love. Um, We want every single person at CVCS to know and be loved. I I say this to staff, and I've said this probably every time I've been on the stage. We want every single student that's in our school to have a significant adult that they connect with, that, that, a, that kiddo is going to feel comfortable and safe going to and be able to speak into their life. We want them to have at least one significant adult. Now, I believe there's many that have many more than that, but our goal is for every single one of them to do that and that nobody gets um, dropped through the cracks. Um, we're also currently working on, I'll talk a little bit more about this when I talk about some of our goals, on a profile of a graduate. And what we want to do is really look at what's the profile of a graduate, specifically spiritually. What do we want this kiddo when they graduate our school? We have a lot of stuff written up on what we want, but what do we specifically want them to look like spiritually when they leave our school? After we've said we've equipped them, what does that mean that they're able to do after? What does that kiddo look like after this? All right, finances. Just so you guys can see this overview. Uh oh, top one's a little short. Short. So our tuition um, is eight eight million seven hundred and twenty nine thousand. You can see kind of where every bit of our basic money goes. And what we do is we put these in large categories so you guys can see how they do. And then also um, where our expenses come. So most, our, of course, our income is tuition and fees. You'll see the other. There are some interest income as well as some donations that sit there. Uh, and our total income is right around $11.5 million, $11 million ish. You can see in the expenses below, almost 70% go directly to wages and benefits. And I, we, we believe that that's a great percentage of where we have the money's going. And we're blessed in a lot of ways of not having a lot of large overhead right now. And we, and we feel really confident and f- strong about that. Programs you see, facilities 1.2, um, supplies, depreciation, other and then total expenses. So you can see... From an annual basis, it's pretty close to break even. Thus, the word nonprofit. Um, our, I'll, I'll tell you guys, as we talk as a board, as we talk as, a, as an executive team, et cetera, our goal is to give almost every penny we possibly can to staff. If there's extra money, that's where it's going to go. Uh, we, did, we gave a gift at Christmas, so you guys know at the end of the year, you guys gave a gift. We take that and immediately make sure we're able to give that gift at Christmas. When I talk about the gala in a little bit, one of the main things we're going to be asking for at the gala, guess what? Money that goes to, goes to, to teachers, and we will immediately give that money, hopefully, to teachers within, honestly, even that month, as long as we have enough come in to do that, okay? So that's what our goal is in the overview. All right, next page. This is our financial position. I better put at least one more time. First, debt. We had a $1.5 million new property. Last year, I talked about this, this new property. Here's the really cool thing. It's paid in full. We paid off cash. And that's literally because we had two significant donors that gave most cash to go directly to that so that we would start looking at the projects in the future with no debt sitting on that, okay? We do have one debt. Uh, we have a, a bond of $3.8 million over at the Meridian campus, secondary campus. Um, of, I wish we could get a 2.7% interest anything right now, um, but that's currently where our interest rate sits with, with that amount of money, okay? Here's our cash position. Again, it looks like that top. Okay, operational, um, we have about $2.1 million. Fundraising restricted, I'll talk a little bit about that here in a second. It's $2.1 million fundraising unrestricted is about 700000 for a total cash amount right now is about $5 million. I round everything. If you get, I taught math, so all I do when I see numbers is I round. And, and my CFO knows this because I round everything up. 
He's like, you can't keep rounding everything up. Can't round everything up. Um, of that money, and you can see the ones that say fundraising restricted, most of that, 1.9 of it, is designated for the new campus or the one campus project, okay? The rest of those can be used as we're, we see need within the facility, uh, staff, whatever that might be, okay? So that's what the difference between restricted and unrestricted. Now, the other parts of the restricted, there are people that give specifically to a sport team, or the music department, or the elementary technology. There are certain areas that are restricted, so that would be in that category as well. So far, I'm in good shape. I'm not, I haven't had 18 questions, but I know they're coming, and that's good. Financial position, um, going forward, uh, this is just kind of continued. Tuition increase, and you guys have that in front of you. Uh, tuition increase is a large conversation every year at the, at the board. The board gives uh, me a range that we can look at from a budgetary standpoint to say yes or no on how to meet t teacher salary schedule. Is basically, you guys saw the percentage, 70% goes to teacher salary and benefits. So as we, we have, I don't know, I don't think this is true, Brett, we don't have any in increase in facility costs, exclu excluding maybe the rent of the modulars at the secondary, right? Yeah, inflationary stuff. So the only increase that we're going to be taking, almost every penny of this $900 million that will basically be raised by tuition increase and some, some growth will be going directly to teachers' salaries and benefits. Benefits typically are going to probably be increased if you guys haven't seen this in your own benefits. Um, all of them are coming in anywhere from 10 to crazy number percent increase in, in uh, medical costs. So we're doing some antis anticipatory uh, positioning for that, but that's exactly where the monies will be going. Okay, um, there, 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 I said it all. Here's our, your tuition um, is probably going up. For most of you, your tuition for an individual student is about 30 or $40 to $40 a month more than what you have. I was talking to a parent earlier to, before uh, as they were coming in, and, and they said it's more than that as I'm looking at this. If you're going from elementary to middle school, it's, it is definitely a, chun a chunk up. So you definitely need to know that. And when you go from middle to high, it's the same. It really is uh, the, the cost of doing business in those areas is just more expensive. It has a lot to do with the electives and the number of teachers and staff that we have that's around those programs, okay? Again, our goal is to do the best we can do to bless our teachers and to impact them. In the last two years, we've raised a base salary, $4,000. So $2,000 a year for the last two years. Our goal is to do something similar this year, but I'll talk a little bit more about that um, Brett and our, our, our coordinator for HR and I have been meeting for about I don't know, months actually on this conversation. How do we get more competitive with local districts? Uh, and, but I will I'll tell you how much fun that is here in a second um, so that we can just talk about it. Okay. Here's the battle. You guys see some people I already heard a giggle. Um, the governor's already made a statement that the state of Idaho wants to be in the top 10 in the nation for teacher salaries. Currently, the state supplements most districts by making sure that their base salary is 40000 Ours is not 40000 right now. We're, we're hoping to get close our base, I'm just being straight with you guys, to $36,000 this year. That's one of our goals. The problem is they're thinking about adding another $7,000 to that this year. And so every time we feel like we're making a step forward, um, the, the state is making four steps forward, which is not putting us closer. But uh, even today, uh, Brett and I were talking about even a two-year plan. But I can tell you what the gap is. The gap for us to even get to the $40,000 uh, base salary is about $400,000 gap. That's the gap. Now, I remember somebody at the gala said, well, how much can we, we should just have money come at the gala to pay for it. The problem is I need that to come in every single year to be able to make that decision. And so, uh, as you guys are looking at tuition, and I know, I know it's an investment, guys. I, you know, I've been a part of uh, Christian education for 15, seven, 17 years now, okay? And I know it's an investment, and it is. Um, and I am looking for other ways for us to figure out any funding, but it, the funding is what it is. And we've got to continue to figure out ways how we can bless our teachers. Every one of you when, you, when you talk to me about, literally almost every one of you, when you talk about finances, the first thing you say to me is we have to figure out how we bless our teachers better. And so I'm, I'm just showing you that is exactly what we're trying to do. 
Um, we don't certainly want to drop another $200 a year or whatever else on, on everyone to be able to make it up to that level. But I'm just telling you the battle that we're dealing with. So we're trying with the increase this year to get a little bit closer. Um, but we're going to try to make a, probably a three- to five-year plan, which we'll be presenting to the board probably in the next uh, six months, so we can see if there's any way for us to get somewhat competitive, okay? Um, that's a significant goal of ours. Look at that. I said everything is on that paper without looking at it. It's good. Um, celebrations. Love these. First, first-time decisions for Christ. We have a number of first-time decisions for Christ. I'm, I always love when I say that and people are like, well, I thought all the kids that were coming here are Christians. Um, first, uh, the biggest time in life to actually make a permanent decision in your life for Christ actually is middle school. That's typically when kids are making a significant decision for Christ. And so that's an area that we really look at, as well as upper elementary. We're seeing that. So we've seen a number of times our retreats, which I'll talk a little bit more about here in a second, et cetera. But we get super excited, and we're even doing more altar calls of salvation for kids to be able to do that. I know, you know, there's nothing like being a teacher and getting to pray for a kiddo uh, for salvation. And uh, that's just an incredible thing that we get to keep seeing. Thousands of service hours performed, by, especially by our high school students, just thousands. Uh, They're just doing an amazing job. Band and Color Guard uh, were the first ever 2A school to perform under the lights in the showcase at the end of the Mel Shelton District 3 competition due to their success. And there were some photos that were there. And they were recognized uh, for best use of lights for a musical group at the Caldwell Lights Parade. Anybody go? It was cold that night, by the way. The Caldwell Lights Parade was cold this year. Um, but they, they both marched in that one as well as the Meridian Parade. It was a lot of fun. Other things that were just celebrations, these are just overviews. Peer ministry at the elementary campus. Three quarters of the class applied to be a part of the peer ministry. And if you have one of those that is either part of that or unloading kiddos out of the car, you see what a blessing that is. And uh, that's, I've loved watching that as, as they have done, come here. Any early childhood parents here? There's a few of you. Good, good. The Christmas program was phenomenal. Literally, it was one of the best early childhood uh, Christmas programs I think I've ever seen. And that was a, a huge uh, celebration. Kids graduating out of the SAS program. We are seeing numerous kids that are continuing to progress academically and be able to go from what's uh, generally a, a class with a little extra help into a, a general classroom. And we're seeing a lot of advancement with that. We all know we heard the COVID uh, a gap a little bit, and we've seen some incredible, you know, you have kids that went for a couple years on over, some of you maybe did with online education, we knew that they came in behind a little bit. The gains that we've seen happen of kiddos, um, she Shelly was sharing with some of the changes in, in some of the academic progress just with us uh, in the leadership team the other day, and it's super exciting to see what the teachers are able to do with these kids. We had an alumni reunion game, and I, I, Connor, how come you didn't ask me to play in that game? You didn't ask me to play in the basketball game. Okay, I, just, I was thinking back about that. I'm like, how come I didn't play in the game this year? So that I could, I think and my son didn't come and play. But we had one of the best turnouts of our alumni basketball game. If you're not, I encourage you, even as your kids are smaller, come to a couple of the games. Just the, the fun that's there and the excitement that's there, you get to see how our kids are excited as well. And it's a fun culture that's to be a part of. All right. I'm continuing to drink water because I'm dry up here. Let's see what I got. Good. Okay, here's some more celebrations. Faith taking root. Elementary chapel, worship, and salvations. We talked about the salvations, but here's their, their verse for the year. If you haven't heard it, the kids can tell you over and over, but I will read it to you anyway. But whatever happens to me, remember always to live as Christians should, so that whether I ever see you again or not, I will keep on hearing good reports that you are standing by, side by side with one strong purpose to tell the good news. That's Philippians 1.27. And no, that's not the King James Version. That's the Living Bible for those Bible people that think that was funny, which was sound like nobody. Thank you. So the, over, the oververse of this, or the focus, is standing side by side with one strong purpose. And Trevor's done a wonderful job of keeping our, our um, chapels focused on going forward with that. Here's another thing that I think is just a great celebration. is literally the heart of our elementary kiddos. I was here, uh, I don't know, it was maybe a month ago, chapel or something like that, and I don't know, what, Vicky, was it you or Shelly? Got, Vicky got up and, and did a very kind admonishing of the kids because we had a kindergarten class that built this super awesome snowman. This is a snowman. 
And some kids, because if you're in third, fourth, or fifth grade and you're a boy, I'm not saying anything gender, don't yell at me later because I said that, a built snowman means you do what to it? You, you destroy it. I, yeah, you see, I, all the guys said that. You tackle it. That's what you do. So um, Mrs. Ms. Jones did a wonderful job of sharing with the kids, hey, this is what we d- don't do here. This is how, when we're walking side by side, how do we honor and love and care about those? So our fourth grade, what they did that day is they went back out and built the most incredible snowman for the kindergarten class, rebuilt it to make sure that they showed love. And I, I, to me, guys, uh, that'll get me crying. That kind of culture, if we can actually create that, now we pray we can keep that in middle school. I'm just telling you that. It's just a whole thing. How many of you have middle school kids already? Okay. Am I telling the truth? Yes. It's, we don't know what happened. Well, I can tell you there's a lot of biological things that happen, but we won't go there too much right now. Speaking of middle school, middle school retreats in chapel, they had some great um, retreats this year, both 7th and 8th grade have retreats, if you didn't know that. Some of them, sh- they're shorter than high school, which I'll talk in a minute. And the chapels have been, been great. They've really got to concentrate on having uh, their own chapel and having their own culture there. They're set up by their own teams, uh, and we're able to follow a similar theme. However, they're able to have their own worship time, their own time together, and it's been incredible. We still do occasional ones with the middle school and high school combined in the gymnasium. Um, but pretty much most of theirs are separate, and it's been a really positive uh, thing this year. Third, high school retreat is all together. Any of you have a high school kid? Okay. So they did, they, we, we wanted them all together, and there is not a camp, just so you guys know, in the state of Idaho that we've been able to find. If you know of one, please tell us, because we'd love to not travel six hours to actually get to it, but we are traveling six hours to the beautiful city of Antelope, Oregon. Yep, there are, I think, 12 people that live in the town, and there is a Young Life camp there called Washington Family Ranch, and I I know I was talking to Kim DeMaine, the high school principal, the other day, and she said it's been one of the most incredible culture-building things that we've ever done as a high school, because we had the entire high school there, and uh, our plan, despite the fact that we actually, it's the first week of October, just so you guys know what we're doing, we're trying to build a culture where that is kind of the high school thing, that first week of October. It's the same week we have off here where you guys do conferences with teachers, and the high school goes for three days and does this retreat. And it's an incredible impact, incredible opportunity uh, to do. Uh, finally, um, secondary, reach, uh, excuse me, chapel, this has been their focus this year, because we've asked them to really have central focus. First quarter was follow Christ. Individuals must follow Christ before they can be a part of his community. Second was gather, uh, not just being in the same place, but sharing life together. Really talking, and you want to talk to teenagers about sharing life and caring and caring about each other. That's a culture shift. It's not what our culture is telling our kids to do, but we are. Third, like this one, bodybuilding. That's our current one. Challenging and admonishing one another to grow in the faith so we can do a lot of things for Christ. And then finally, fourth quarter will be share the kingdom with others. So those would be the things we're walking through with high school chapel. All right. Next level stuff for, this is middle school and high school. Um, these are little things just so you guys know what's going on uh, at the high school. We, uh, Julie Morgan has been applying for this grant year after year, and she got the most amounted this year. I think it was, was it 25000 Is that correct, uh, Wade? 25000 grant, and that's all going to science, tech, engineering, art. Uh, we're able to take all of that money and, and do it directly towards some of the things. And we have different teachers that have written grants to, within our own program to be able to do that. So it's an incredible thing with the Brandt Foundation. We had seven seniors of 2022 that went on to play college athletics. Is that right, Connor? Seven? Yep. And then uh, so far already this year, we have three college signings. I did see our quarterback just got an offer of some kind as well, uh, the football quarterback. So he hasn't signed anything yet. Uh, so we have a n- neat opportunities that are going out. Girls basketball won their first state championship, and uh, our, our coach got some accolades as well on top of that. Boys and girls were state champions, and we got to host that tournament this year, which was a lot of fun, lots of sun, a lot of fun. In fact, Wa- uh, Parker Wallace uh, was one of the first ever CVCS golfer to win the individual state championship. Um, again, we have three uh, national merit commended and semifinalist students. And guys, I've said this from the, you do not see schools our size with that many kids that are national merits. You just do not see it. It's an amazing thing. Middle school, um, incredible participation in middle school. As your kids are getting up to the, to the, especially the seventh grade level, there's a lot of neat opportunities for them. Um, high school, or excuse me, the middle school football team were the champions this year, and they will tell you about it. 
And then also our middle school girls. I don't know if that was the first time, but our middle school girls were, were champions. Is that the first time girls have been champions? No. Connor's like, no, they've done that before. Um, but it was a lot of fun uh, to, f- to see them both having those opportunities to be able to go forward. And then boys, middle school boys bas- basketball is in season right now. Okay. I love this one. Um, this is just a picture. You guys don't, won't even know the person. But when we're talking about culture and things we celebrate, I love to celebrate the culture that I see in our secondary kids, uh, middle school and high school. Um, it's, an, it's a time in life, literally, I believe you are pr- potentially the most selfish of your entire life, excluding some of my, my two college kids. But beyond that, they're not selfish. They just want me to continue, continue to send them money. That's what I've learned. That's coming to all you, all those people near you. You will see the text message. You know if a text message is coming in, they're asking, hey, Dad, I need a little bit more money. But Bernie um, was our receptionist, uh, Danielson, and she, I don't even know how many years she'd been there. Three years? Brett, does that sound about right? Probably. Um, But she created such a neat relationship with the kids. This is after school. They were doing a line just like you would for a state championship, and the kids are going out to get on the bus. Um to thank her for how that she served them and loved them. And that makes me get all teary-eyed again, too, so that's it. Okay, test scores. I'm not going to show you all of ours, but I think the SAT is probably the best thing to look at so that you guys can see trends that are going on as a school. I'll let you guys look. Um, state average, you can see, is 993. National is 1095. Our overall average is 11.25, and then our top 25% of our students, um, they sit right at the 13.49. And so the opportunity for kids, uh, both whether they're middle or accelerated, they have incredible opportunities. Class of 2021 earned $4.1 million in scholarships, and my son was one of the 2022, so I wanted to show a comparison. Class of 2022 um, got $4,370,000 plus in scholarships this last year going to school. So those are... Great celebrations, and as I'm paying his tuition, it was great that he got some scholarships. You laugh. If you're, whatever you're saving for college, save more. Uh, parent volunteers, here's some more partnerships that have been phenomenal. Parent volunteers have had just a great, it's been nice, certainly we know since the COVID shutdown, people really wanted to get back in here. The amount of, of volunteers and, and willingness, both at the elementary specifically, as well as middle school and high school, has been just significant. I want to thank you guys for being those partners with us. We love having you on campus. We love extra eyeballs and elbows and work and love and all of those things that sit there. Thank you. There's prayer and prayer walks that are going on on both campuses. And in there like a prayer thing this next, is it this month? Whole month of February, 20 days of prayer here, here on this campus. And if you uh, want to be a part of that, I'm sure there's still need opportunities to pray. Guys, we need prayer, okay? Uh, we are continued to be bombarded and attacked in all kinds of ways. Brett and I talk about this probably every single day. It seems like every day we turn around, and whether it's legislation, legal stuff, taxes, um, policies, significant policies that we continue to battle, uh, there's attacks that are happening all the time. So... Uh, please be praying. PTF at the elementary, you've just done a, a phenomenal job. Uh, they threw, uh, they do a great job just, just blessing this, this school. They also threw a, a huge Christmas party again for us, for the entire staff, uh, right before Christmas. And they just have done such a wonderful job. Um, commun- the community building events uh, have been incredibly well attended. And then a reminder, if you haven't already got your ticket, gala is March the 9th. And uh, it's, it's a great time. It's going to be at the Grove this year. Um, I'm sure I'll get made fun of in front of people. We have a great uh, auctioneer that will be uh, having a, a lot of fun time. There's a lot of neat opportunities to be there. So please, if you have, have that evening off, please come and join us. We'd love to have you there. I love this picture. It's one of our community events, Donuts with Dads. Now, whoever thought about Donuts with Dads, I think it's one, maybe one of the best ideas ever. Um, but it's... it's I'll go, I'm going to go sexist again. It's one thing, moms, you guys are always the ones that show up, but to see the kind of turnout that we've had from the dads as well uh, is a warming in my heart, I can tell you that. These kids need dads involved in their lives, so it's, it's amazing for, them, for us to see that, and thank you again just for your involvement that sits there. I promise I'm trying to go quickly. How am I doing? We're doing good? Hey, we're not doing bad. Perfect. 
So this last year, um, we had some initiatives that I shared with you guys last year. We actually did a board retreat, and we came up with five strategic initiatives that are basically the focus. They're not basically. They are the main focus of what I'm being held accountable to, okay? These five things. And I'm going to talk about the first two, which we know a little bit about, and I'll tell you a little more later. But to me, honestly, the, the next three are the most important that are on this, on this list, Okay. First, new campus uh, campaign, Coal Valley Christian Schools will conduct a multi-year comprehensive capital campaign to underwrite a portion of the construction costs for the new campus and, and, and establish an endowment. I'll talk a little bit more of that at the end of the presentation. New campus construction, Coal Valley Christian Schools will design, plan, and construct and occupy a 50-acre campus with well-appointed academics, athletics, arts, facilities to serve 1,800 students goal is by fall of 2025. I think we're going to be moving that back a little bit, but that's still one of our goals. Culture and community, Coal Valley Christian Schools will intentionally focus energy, resources, personnel, programs to nurture and promote the culture of Coal Valley communities, engaging families, students, staff, alumni, and friends, and that's, that is a big one for us. I'll talk more about. Spiritual formation, which is actually a group that I'm over. Uh, Coal Valley Christian Schools will develop and staff a comprehensive pre-K-12 Spiritual formation program to foster knowledge of God, relationship with God, and service to God, one another in the community. And then finally, um, the organizational and personal, uh, personnel development, Coal Valley Christian Schools will organize and equip its professional staff and recruit, retain, and reward, that's part of us talking about salaries, and expanding well-credentialed teaching staff to increase the effectiveness and improve excellence. So you see these five things. This is where we're focusing. We're really focused in our energies and efforts on that. There are a breakout. We had the entire staff go through and, and um, do strengths and weaknesses in these areas. Uh, in fact, we had the entire staff as a part of that. They've broken out since then, and they're in individual committees. I can tell you the one specifically I'm running, but I'll go to that next slide. I think it's on the next one anyway. So let me see if it is. No, there's two task forces, and then I'll talk more specifics. There's also two task forces. Um, Eric gets to run one of these. Is the safety task force? Safety task force. Uh, he'll be. He's putting a team together to basically overlook and see our strengths and weaknesses on safety and security in both campuses. Okay. And uh, there's a few of you that might have already been invited. To, or I can tell you, you're on a list, whether you know you're on a list or not yet. That'll be looking at that. And then there's a, the next one is the Vision, Mission, and Values Task Force. The board will establish and oversee a task force charged with rearticulating the Colby Christian School's mission, vision, and vision statements. All right. This really is interesting to do all these three things. Um, I'm going to go. I go back with red. Is that correct? Okay. When you look at this, I know that the two big elephants that are sitting in there is the new campus and, and the campaign. We're working on those. But, guys, I'm telling you right now, the most important three things that are up here are those bottom three, okay? And I'll speak to them briefly. Community and culture. Um, we've already had a couple committee meetings on this. And we, every time I walk in here, I hear people's concerns that culture is going to change. Now, I hear that same concern when I go to the grocery store, by the way. Um, I hear that same concern at the church that I'm a part of. I hear that same concern when people are, are in uh, beeping their horn on 84 and throwing waving signs and things like that at me. Um, anytime things grow, things can change. And so I can just tell you that our, our focus is so strong on making sure that we're staying very focused on culture. Um, Every time I think I do one of these, some people are going to come up and ask, and every time we do this committee meeting, I'm, I'm just going to tell you, here's the same question that I get every time, and I, I want you to hear me say it in front from stage. Um, are we just letting everybody in school? Are we continuing to, to, to screen? Are we making sure that we're setting up processes to make sure that those that are truly a part of our culture, that want to be a part of a Christian school, are coming in? I can tell you that our screening process, I believe we've actually improved that in the last couple of years. But we have grown. We're not the same size. Um, I was asked the other day, do you, mid sometimes in the year, do you go double check to make sure everybody's going to church? We don't do that. <laughs> Okay? Part of a partnership is your relationship and my, our relationship. And we are expecting all of us to be uh, yoked together in a similar goal going forward with that. Uh, we're not going to become dogmatic about that, but it's super important that we are partnered. And I want to say that from the stage, guys. We, uh, when we're, I wish uh, Rachel was here who does our tours. Literally, when I do tours, this is my first statement. To, some of you maybe were in the tour if I was there and I said it. I said, 
understand our difference here is that we are going to be pursuers and followers of Christ. That's the difference that we are. And if that doesn't sound like something that fires you up, you're on the wrong tour, please leave. I don't say leave. I probably say something nicer than that. But I want to make sure you guys know that that is what we are going to stay strong to and try to hold everybody accountable to, okay? In a loving, compassionate, grace, truth, and love way. All right. Second one, spiritual formation. We want to create a clear vision of what it looks like for a graduate from spiritual formation and then be very on purpose. We have phenomenal teachers that are pouring Christ into kids over and over and over. We want to be more on purpose with succinct blocks of where we want them to hit as they get through our school, okay? And I am pulling some local pastors in on that committee. Our second committee meeting is actually going to be on February the 21st. We're having an in-service that day, and we'll be having like a three-hour uh, grouping looking at that one specifically, okay? And then finally, organization and pers uh, personnel development. This one's um, Tabitha, who's our, our HR coordinator, is the one running this committee. And it's, it's a tough committee because it has a lot to do with, with salary and benefits as well as how do we continue to bless, train, keep, uh, attract. Guys, we went to a job fair today as you're praying. And this is how many teachers we saw during that job fair. Ready? Zero. Zero. That's not true. There's two sophomores that just started the educational degree at NNU. Beyond, that's, that's how many teachers were out there right now. It's important for us to continue to get on the front end of recruiting, training, and raising up teachers for the future for our school, okay? All right, I feel like I'm preaching a little bit. I apologize. These are three areas, though, that we are giving special attention to right now on top of the, the strategic, so I want you to understand that. Growth planning. Um, I'll talk a little more in, in, the, in uh, one of the other slides, but... For those that know, we went through the last year, we talked about growth, we talked about adding sections, we got some great feedback in, in some of these open sessions, and in fact, we slowed growth down significantly. I think listening to some great feedback from some parents, and we decided not to add a full four sections at elementary last year, we only did it K1 and 2, and I'll talk again in, in a second, but I think that's been a, a great move for us. We've been very on purpose on how that growth is. Growth is still happening. Uh, I can tell you, we already had the registration we had, numbers we've had in January are significant. They're not 300 on the waiting list like we had during the COVID time, but it's, you know, it's 20 or 30 or 15 or, or 20 that are, are there. Uh, we do believe the areas that we're looking at potentially growing, that the numbers are, are strong there, that we can do that and we can hire another teacher. But I'll, again, talk more detail about that. Development of a middle school, and I'll talk a little bit about that. I feel like we've done some, honestly... Um, waiting the extra year, we have some modulars over at the secondary, waiting the extra year, making sure that the facility piece worked with 7th and 8th grade as well as high school, I think was a great move that we did, so that by next year when we bring the 6th grade over there, we'll be in a really good place for that. I can't promise traffic yet, that's still an issue, it doesn't matter which campus you're on, period. There is nobody smiling about traffic, except for Shelly, thanks Shelly for smiling about traffic. Future and growth. Now, I already, I already talked, touched on these a little bit. Um, but so, for those that might be new, last year we decided to go to four sections of kindergarten, first and second grade. That created a different teaching model. So Shelly and her team have taken the year to also train. They took the summer to train the teachers in the, that little bit difference of an of a educational model. And then they've been taking those teachers to make sure that they're able to lead train the following year. Second grade, of course, will already have four sections going up to third next year. And we'll add a fourth section of fourth and fifth grade. So the, here's the positive. There will not be more students on campus because sixth grade is going to the other campus than there are right now. So you won't see more cars. I'm not going to say you will see less cars. You'll see less educated cars early next year, which means we'll have to train those to make sure that they know how to get in and out. And then those of you that are going to the middle school will have to do the exact same thing there with a little bit smaller surface to be able to get you in and through there. Um, but we're excited about that. We, we feel like the, we've had some significant success with our, with our K-2 model. And also kindergarten, going back to a homeroom concept with one teacher being the main lead teacher. And that was feedback from our teachers as well, saying, hey, can we look at this? I feel like all of those moves have been really, really positive for kids, which is our number one goal. Looking at my notes to see if I missed anything. Nope, that's good. Okay. This need 
that was identified, just for you guys to know, was identified five or six years ago, the need to have a true middle school. And so I want to quickly speak to it. Last year, we spent a lot of time talking about middle school. I'm not going to talk as much this, this year. But there is a gap. Um, in the past, what we did is we basically we went through sixth grade here, and then they went to seventh grade at the secondary. And for the most part, seventh grade was treated just by lower, like lower high school. There really wasn't their own culture, et cetera. Well, t- two years ago, we hired a middle school principal. We created this seventh, eighth grade middle school concept with the idea that we're going to bring sixth grade up there. It, it really is an area that they need specifically um, for their adolescent development that sits there. They are a different animal. They're a different animal, okay? Um, their brains are absolutely bathed in testosterone and hormones. And it, it, the only people that are laughing right now is somebody that either has had one or has one right now. And it is a different animal. And if, if you're getting ready to have your first middle school person, we'll pray for you and we'll walk through you. But that is the whole point of the middle school. The also, also what happened, and I've got a couple of middle school teachers that are, that are here. Brian, Brian's our tech teacher at the middle school. Um, but what also happened is they only had them for two years, so they couldn't really get to know them and, and create that culture within, within their home rooms and really be able to mentor them during that most difficult time. How many of you thought that was the most difficult time of your life? Guys, I was the same height in seventh grade as I am right now, okay? It's built different. Didn't have gray hair, didn't have the goatee. Well, I had kind of a goatee. I thought it was a goatee. All guys thought they were growing hair by the time there's, yeah, because my voice was changing. All right, but it was, it, it is a significant time that we were putting a lot of energy in. In fact, we'll be hiring an assistant principal or a dean that's going to be a part of that team also next year. So we'll have a principal, assistant principal, dean, as well as at least an administrative assistant that is just running that middle school, along with, we'll still have peripheral counselors. Um, athletic director, et cetera, that are still helping that middle school. So we're excited about what we have for the future of that and how that's going to be there. It's been a gap in our education in the past, and uh, we're excited about what's, what's going to happen for the future. All right, don't forget questions, because I appreciate that there's none, but I'm going to keep going. I already talked about all of this. Um, here, here are parts of middle school of, of what they do. And, how many are going to have a middle schooler next year? I just want to know how many I'm talking to. Okay, I'll keep talking a little bit about it. Engineered toward adolescence. Everything from chapel to how we're, we're doing um, homeroom or their advisory. Uh, there's been conversation. There's, we, they did some single gender uh, advisory. They've done some combined gender advisory. Mr. Goodbye and I just talked about again today about maybe going back to single gender because they're confused. and not. Con- uh, wow, I won't even go there. We have two genders, boys and girls, and I'm going to say that from the stage, too. Um, it's a teaming approach. Teaming approach it, it means that they're taking from their own core areas, and they're going to be working with every kid so that they're able to advance through that. They're working together as a team, uh, and so you're going to have a sixth-grade team that works together, a seventh-grade team, and an eighth-grade team. I appreciate a few of you smiling at me right now. Thank you. I tried to jump off the cliff, but I didn't. Too bad. Um, it's going to be considered and an around best practice that is specific to middle, middle school and adolescence and how we get them the furthest. I, one of the worst conferences I ever went to, this guy was talking about the, the adolescent brain, and he, he, he was trying to inspire us, I guess. He goes, I'm not sure that middle school kids learn anything in three years. Their, their brains are just so dead. We don't agree with that, by the way. I don't know how much they do learn, but they learn a lot socially. They learn a lot spiritually. They learn a lot about how to grow up to be from, from boys to young men and girls to, to, to women. And it's a phenomenal place for us to be able to do that together, okay? It's a great partnership. Um, and the, the mission is to challenge and shepherd them. And again, I jokingly say it over and over, but it is a mission when you're dealing with middle school. It, guys, my first teaching job was middle school. And it's still one of the, my favorite things I've ever done. A little bit more. Modulars and pace place. For those that don't know, we actually placed four modulars at the element at the middle school. Not for the middle school to be in them. The high school is going to be actually. And so for those that will, you guys will be a part of. I think I put that down here. That's oh, my next slide. There's a preview day. I'll say it now so that you remember. Seventh grade preview day and sixth grade preview day are the same day. This 17th of February. That's a day off. Seventh grades in the morning. Sixth grades in the p.m. And you guys will see more details where the classrooms are. How, we're, how they're going to move around the classrooms. Um, always the question is how much are they going to be integrated with the high school. I will not tell you they're not going to have any integration, not have any integration. 
but it will be limited. There might be a few elective classes that they cross over with them, different lunches. There will be a different start and stop time. Um, for the most part, m the classrooms are in, on the main and second level, while high school is on the upper level and the modulars. So with the modulars in place, we have eight, eight classrooms in the modulars, okay, for high school. So we're, we're feeling pretty good about that in the transition. We have a transition team in place. Mr. Goodbar is working with both the transition team at the middle school as well as the existing sixth grade teachers to create a great transition for them going into that campus next year. Are all the details put in place? Not all of them, but there are many of them. Um, starting the day, day schedule, you guys will see that on the 17th. You're going to see how they're going to flow through that, pretty much most of the classes that are going to be offered for them, how we're going to do pick up and drop off. We have two ideas. We're still, waking, we're still working through the two drop off and pickups. I'm not sure we're going to be able to really figure it out until we do it live. I'm just being honest with you. Um, I, we even talked about could we try to do it with middle school. And most likely, well, middle school, there's going to be probably a 10 to 15 minute gap between the start of middle school and high school so we can get that cleared out before high school gets, comes in. Okay? And uh, we believe it'll work. I'm praying it's going to work. But it, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's a deal. Continue to refocus on relationships and culture. Um, and uh, there's a couple emails I had this year. Not this year, this day. Not this year, just today. About some bumps that we've had at the middle school level. Um, we continue to see things that go well and things that aren't. Uh, Brian Carnes, and the, he's part of the, part of the team that, that does this. Uh, I think, again, it's been great for us to do a two-class group, two class group of this so that we can find some of the things that worked and some of the things that didn't work so that when we pull the full sixth grade up, we have a better idea of how to make that really function better and better. And I'm excited about the leadership team. They've made some great decisions recently, and I think even this next semester, middle school is going to see some of those that are coming up. All right. This one, people want to know lots about. I should just get Mr. Papik up here, let him go ahead and just talk about this. I know he's prepared to give a full testament on this. So um, we have a design of the building. We have a great design of the building. We own the 72 acres. You guys know that's debt-free. Uh, when we first took the design that we did from LKV, which is the architect, and gave it to general bidders to give an idea of what the cost is going to be, um, I will just tell you it was significantly more than we were hoping for, significantly. And for anyone that's in construction, you guys know what I'm talking about. We're not talking a couple million. We're talking 40% significant to a degree, okay? And so we have had to go back to the drawing board in a lot of ways of saying, how do we structurally engineer this? How do we look at this differently? What are some things we can do? And that's the process we're in right now. So I can't give you a solid, this is what we're going to do. We do believe with fairly decent confidence that we will do breaking ground in the fall, Okay. Um, we just made a decision regarding, yes, <laughs> that will break ground in the fall. Um, we will be doing something that's called a silent phase uh, campaign within probably the next 12 months. And then you guys will see probably gala-ish of next year uh, when we will do a public campaign and start telling you guys really where the financial goals are that we're trying to get from A to B. Um, Brett and I are working with banks, and we're, Wade and I are working with donors, and we're doing a whole bunch of stuff uh, behind the scenes to get us from here to there. Our goal still would be phenomenal to be able to have at least some athletic fields and stuff by 2025, uh, and, and maybe even be in the building by 2025 or 2026. Okay? That's the overview. But it's, I, I, we need construction costs to go down. The cost of money going down would be helpful also. Uh, and labor costs need to go down. Those, those are some things that timing-wise, and maybe God is slowing us down right now so that we can wait for that time to be there so that the overall cost of this is going to be. We don't want to be in a position, you guys, if you remember back to the budget, we don't want to be in a position with the budget where our facility costs are outweighing what it, what it does to pay teachers. Guys, if we can't stay in that 70% range, me saying that we're trying to get to being competitive in the state for teaching, for paying teachers is a ridiculous statement. So we can't have facility. Um, so we're, we're working on all other different models financially to make sure that that doesn't happen. I won't give you the details of that now, but I got a lot of really smart people working on that. Okay? That's the basic overview. Did I miss anything with that, Michael? No? Okay. Good. All right, that's the overview, guys. Here's the slide for any more questions. If you have some other questions, would you pop those in there? Um, if you didn't, if you need a card, oh, I'm not seeing anything. See, that's why I'm not answering questions. Hmm. 
<laughs> hey, how about I look at your computer? Let me try this computer, because obviously, mine's not telling me the questions. Um, first question. Uh, will there still be multi-student and pastoral tuition discounts next year? If so, same, same percentage, uh, question mark. Um, the answer is, we are looking at those as a board, but there are no changes in the multi-student discount for next year currently. All right? Brett, am I saying that correctly? Yes. Um, we did make a change a year ago for pastoral discounts. And so those that were already in our family or pastors were getting the same as a staff discount. Others are grandfathered to 25%. Okay? Um, there's a lot of non-refundable fees due prior to even being able to apply for tuition. With increases, this makes the decision to enroll difficult. We, and I'm not going to, I know it does. It does. And for us, understand, especially when we have waiting lists, um, we're trying to figure out staffing and hiring and everything from this. And so I, I get that. Um, uh, I don't know that I have anything else to say besides it is. It is a commitment, I understand. And um, I'm, yeah, I don't Anything else I should say about that? I'm looking for Brett to help me on that, on that question. He's looking at me smiling. I don't have a better answer. It is. We are asking you to do a significant commitment up front financially to, to keep moving forward. And, and I know that for many of us, finances aren't getting easier right now. I, I understand that. And so um, I just say pray for that. You know, if you want to come and talk to me or Brett individually as well uh, about some of that, and if, if you're in a specific situation personally as a family, come talk to us, and, and we'll walk you through anything we can do to be helpful with that as well, okay? I'll still keep coming down, back to that partnership uh, on that. Um, okay, so we're asking the percentage of percentage increase uh, of tuition, uh, you guys, I, I, individually, you guys can look at the tuition percentage right off the top of my head. I, I don't know that I know what that is exactly. Um, but do teachers receive cost of living increases? Um, again, the last two years, we've tried to give teachers $2,000 increase. This year, we're looking at that and how do we get them on a scale that's closer. Our goal is going to be similar to what that is. That doesn't mean every single teacher. There's some that are in different scales with it. So if you guys know a typical teacher salary sch schedule, they do it by experience and, and, and degrees. We're trying to create, uh, over time, that has disintegrated here. And so we're really trying to create a schedule where teachers can see it and have a little more expectation of, okay, if I do this, I know that this is where I can be and be able to live here. That's what we're working on. So the answer is, for sure, they will get a cut unless you're talking about a 10% cost of living. That, that's the challenge. So the answer is no. We're not able to do a 10% cost of living. Is that the right answer? Because isn't that the cost of living right now? It increases 10%. 10% guys would be uh, somewhere around $3,600. And for us to do that tuition, what you see right there, would have to go up probably another 10%. Literally. That's, that's, that is the truth on where we're, where we're dealing with. And we're trying to do that in increments that we all can handle. Okay. Um, do teachers receive tuition discounts? They do, absolutely. And certainly many of them, that's one of the reasons we were, we're able to partner together, and that is definitely a great benefit that they get. Okay, So you guys already heard there are some other, but they do get, I don't mind saying they get half, full-time teachers get, get full-time staff members get 50% off tuition. Okay? If I say something wrong, Brett, you throw something at me, okay? All right. I can't get this thing to go down. Is that all of them? No. Um, they do not get to free, free tuition, by the way. Uh, so, so again, they do get a discount. Thank you. Don't know why that's not working. Um, but they do get uh, they get a 50% discount automatically. Then we also do, they're eligible for financial aid as well. So if we have a teacher that gets the 50% discount because they're full-time, we also put them on the top of the list if they have show financial need and they have to go through the same financial need analysis that you guys would do as a, as a, as a parent group, okay? But we do give them first priority for financial aid. And this last year, our, our financial aid and discounts total with, with discounts to multiple students was $1.6 $1. $1. $1. $1. $1. $1. $1. $1. $1. $1. $1. million. So that you guys know what we're trying to do for those families that are struggling, okay? That's a significant amount. It's maybe one of the highest I've seen. I think it's a great testament of what we're trying to do for, in partnership and, and trying to walk forward. 
Um, where should we look to get our students' PSAT scores year over year? Ms. Shelley, do we have the PSAT scores year over year? That's right. I don't know. Um, I would assume uh, the academic counselor, if you get a hold of Kristen, she, she should be able to have access to that. Um, is that the right answer? Any secondary people out there? Yes? Yes? Okay. Yep, our academic counselor would be able to, to, to show you that. Sorry, you got to remember, Colorado, PSAT. I'm like, wait a minute, we did that in elementary. I, we did do some of that in elementary. And then Shelly later is going to say, no, you didn't do that in elementary. It was a different thing. Different acronyms, I don't remember them. I know there were tests, though, and I remember, I remember being able to see those. What's the location of the new campus? Uh, McDermott and McMillan-ish. McDermott and McMillan-ish. It's on the west side of, well, really, it's south of Star right now. Pretty much south of Star in that area, okay? Uh, the development over there is, is certainly significant. Um, the percent of multi-student is not on there. Again, that's a discussion in the past. Percent of discount has been what for, for second kid? 10 for second. 10, 20, 30. Um, and he, I'll just tell you the conversation. It, most likely will not have no change this year, but the, the conversation behind the scene is it, it's, it's hard when we're starting to get 30% off of tuition. When I, you guys are hearing me have the same conversation about how we're struggling to be able to make sure we're paying our teachers. I'm just, this, that's just, those are just honest conversations. Um, but at the same time, we don't want to price families out that have multiple kids. Uh, so it's a catch-22. We want to be able to do partnerships. So we're continuing to look for ways. How do we do that? Can we look for other funding? Can we look for other financial help for those families that if we do take that, that, that away in the future, um, that we can help those families? So all of those are real conversations there. With growth, oh, good. I think I just figured out how to, oh. It just went away. David. Oh, yes, there it is. I'm sorry. I don't know why. Is there not a scroll on this? I can't use the arrow. Thank you. He knows I use a regular mouse. I don't use the two-finger thing. I know. I'm a math guy. Um, location. Oh, there we go. Um, got that. Do we, add, do we intend to add additional support staff uh, with growth? Uh, depends on what you define as additional support staff. Um, we are definitely, we're adding staff in each area where there's growth specifically around teachers. We are looking at some aides, if that's where support staff is. Um, office staff, we're definitely looking at the middle school level as potentially having a part-time additional uh, middle school uh, staff person. Uh, at the elementary, you won't see any increase in support staff this next year because they actually will have the same number of students on campus, if that makes sense. But there will be some that we're looking at at the secondary level. What's the enrollment versus plan space in the new construction? Great, great question. So a as of this next year, we're full. There is no more growth after this next year unless we build a new building, okay? So we have allowed the enrollment for four sections of elementary. Some of those, depending on the lower levels, are smaller classes than they are at the, at the upper elementary, which I think we allow 24 or 25 in a class. Um, and that's the largest you're going to see at the like fifth and fourth grade level. Uh, same thing for, for middle school and high school is pretty much the same areas. And there's 100 kids per, per grade all the way up. And so we're full right now, and that's basically 100 straight through from kindergarten all the way up to, to the 12th grade. When we build the new building, we've structured the high school to be able to add an additional 50 kids per, per grade. So we would have 150 per grade or 600 plus an addition could push, push us up to 700 total for the high school would be the max you, there. But we think 600 is really a nice sweet spot for a high school. It's the size, and there's a lot of national studies on this, that you're able to offer pretty much everything yet you're still able to keep that small enough size that you have culture and, you, and the kids are still known. Middle school will go up only one more section to 125 per grade. Elementary will stay the same size that it is. The only thing we've talked about is if, if we had another location where we did a small one-section elementary because you would have that additional section you could put in middle school, we would do that. But our elementary will not grow from the 100 per grade, um, at least in the foreseeable future that we have right now. Okay, Great question. Um, teacher discounts. Hmm. 
other than prayer and dollars, what do you need uh, from support families to support administration and CV, CV mission? Um, certainly those are important for you guys to support the mission. I, I think speaking life into uh, to all of those is, is really important as well. I think it's easy to, to walk through uh, and see a lot of great people here, but I really encourage you, drop some notes, drop some encouragement, look for opportunities to to especially encourage some of the principals. It's not an easy role at times to be a principal. Uh, typically, the communication we get is not the positive communication, uh, especially by the time it gets up to my office. You's, they say things roll downhill, and it's not true. <laughs> things roll uphill. I'll just tell you that for sure. And I'm okay with that. I've been doing this a long time, and, and it's important. But that's, that's one thing. Second, um, right now, there's going to be some, there's going to, I think I can say this from the front. Yeah, I'm this is a non pro I can say this. There should, there's going to be a bill that's going to be coming up pretty soon regarding uh, so tuition options uh, for people to be able to have money that follows you with your kid. And, and so I'd really encourage you to speak some positives into that area. Uh, I don't know if that's going to affect everyone in this room. They're certainly talking about it affecting new families that potentially would come in, into private school or, or selections or choices. Um, I certainly am a big advocate. I'm on behind the scenes with senators helping mold this bill that's coming out. And uh, so as you guys see that, I really encourage that. Um, if we actually had most of the families that had that much more money coming, the idea of us raising a thousand dollar more tuition and be able to truly be competitive with salaries would be an incredible conversation. Brett and I call it a game changer. It is the game changer. If, if you want things to really happen for, for salaries, that's a game changer in our mind. Um, those are two things. Those are big ones though. I think that's a great question. Um, and always keep encouraging those teachers. You guys do a great job with that, but anytime you have an opportunity to bless them, bless them. Uh, you wouldn't believe what a cup of coffee does for them in a, in a lot of ways. Not the donuts, just do the coffee. Um, I'm kind of on a fitness thing, just making sure stay with the black coffee. No, but just bless them. That, I think that's, that can be one of the, th the other things. Also, keep your eyes open. I, here's one of the risks. One of the risks of all Christian schools that I've seen and been an experience are when you feel growth, the first thing we want to do is we want to wrap our arms around, make it safer, and make more rules. Um, that didn't work really good out for uh, the Hebrews. It didn't. That was one of the first things that happened. And I get it. We all want to protect our kids. So I want all of us to work together in partnership to, to, to protect our kids. We absolutely want to do that. But we want to do it with grace and love. We want to speak life. We want to call him. We, you know, like Christ with us, Christ wants us, gives us the opportunity to choose him. And it's hard to create a culture at a Christian school where kids are messy. By the way, parents are just as messy. Um, we all have individual feelings and emotions and, and backgrounds and different churches and all those kind of things. So I just, I really encourage us, as you see things happen, come and talk to us directly. Definitely don't talk among yourselves. That's one of the worst things that happens. It happens at churches, right? It happens at Christian schools. Go speak directly to the person that you're frustrated with. We, I don't care if there's nobody else, which every one of them will talk to you. If there's no one else, let Lori know. And Lori knows I meet with people all day. I think that's my job now. It's just all I do is meet. Okay, because we want to talk through and we want to be partners with you. We also want to improve. And so don't, that is a good one. Don't be afraid to be critical in a, in a loving, caring way. That's how we get better. We know we're not perfect. Please speak truth and love to us. Please give us ideas if you have those. Uh, we also are looking for great connections in the community. How are we going to do this, this new construction? How can we have partnerships with different businesses and stuff around to be able to get from A, B, a to B? Um, we're also continue to always look for great churches that want to continue to be partners with us. Okay, I think I did that okay. I always look out and look for those facial expressions to see if I really screwed up or not. Will sixth grade be eating lunch with seventh and eighth grade? They will. Yep, they will. Um, it, we have a cafeteria and a half. Uh, Mr. Carnes gets to teach in the cafeteria the two hours that it's not a halftime cafeteria, and we have plenty of space for sitting. Is it busy in there? It is. But it's not as busy as literally the high school, although certainly some of the high school kids go off campus. So we've already spaced it up. We believe significantly it'll be fine for the kids and, and it'll be a great time. Also, it's the same kids they went to elementary school with, by the way, when they were in fifth and, or sixth and fifth and fourth grade, okay? Um, they're scarier, though. They, they're taller. They got hair. They smell weird. All of, and so will your sixth grader, by the way. And if it doesn't happen like in the first semester, it'll happen in the second semester. It's coming. 
please don't hit me after this. I apologize, you know, I'm just speaking the truth in love. Um, Somebody's asking me about a business, ways to be able to supplement. We're looking at ideas like that. I'm trying to read these, but not to hold you guys too much longer. Okay, there's another question about lunch. Um, and someone's asking, they're concerned whether another tw- uh, set of kids will look at that. Brian, let's make sure we bring that back. I'd love to hear even the middle school team look at that lunch cafeteria. I'll, I'll look into it more. I'm, I'm usually there at middle school lunch. It, it is a little crazy. But remember, your kids are going from elementary where they're also used to sitting in a classroom to a cafeteria. And it is busy. I'm not going to lie to you. It's not busy. But I don't think we're using the overflow that much. Is there that many kids in the overflow? That's right. So, And we have it seated with the opportunity to have 50-plus kids if we needed to in that area. And so I'll look at that. But I, I don't believe it's as significant as you as it might feel. Um, and I think once it's that full of, with those additional kids, and maybe w- what we might also do is encourage sixth graders to potentially even sit in that area, and that might be, a, a, we've talked about that, that we use the overflow as sixth grade, encourage them to be there first. And so that might be uh, a, one of the ways that we can do that. Is tomorrow night the same? Yes, for 98% of what I say tomorrow night will be the exact as this. So if you're here and you do not want to hear me again um, say middle school jokes, I won't do as many middle school jokes. I might do a few because some of them that already have middle school kids or lived through it, they'll just be saying amen more. They'll smile more at me than you guys did with the questions. Um, will there be busing to the new campus? Yes, we're working on a number of those. That's another area. If you guys know bus drivers, um, I don't know where they are. I, I, I need people to retire and decide bus driving is what they want to do. We need bus drivers, right? Eric, you're supposed to say amen when I do that. We need bus drivers, okay? And if we, I am telling you, if you guys want us to keep doing shuttles, we went, we got leased buses, we got great buses. I need bus drivers. Okay, that's it. That's all I got to say. Somebody could stand out. I don't know if those signs work. Bus drivers, we're hiring bus drivers. Bonuses, I don't know. I don't, bonuses don't seem to do it. Um, is there improvement plans to the current elementary campus? Um, I love that. That's a good question. Uh, we certainly have ideas, uh, but here is, here's the truth of this campus. And yes, if you guys need to take off what time is it? I'm totally over. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep answering these questions, okay, just so you guys know, so, so I can get to most of those. Uh, this campus is owned by Cole Community Church. We lease it, okay? And so for us to be able to do anything beyond the modulars currently, we don't have an opportunity for that. We are in conversations with them about that, okay? Uh, are there any ideas about doing improvements and things like, yes, there are. Uh, Even maybe that's a step to getting to the new property. Those are conversations that we're having, okay? It's as much as I can say about that one without Mr. Papik throwing something at me even. No, it's not a secret. Um, What will happen to the Meridian campus? Most likely we will be selling the Meridian campus. We'll need that that money to be able to uh, make sure we're able to pay for the new one. There's a question about uh, sunlight and air. Uh, Middle school, the the main level doesn't have a lot of that, but there are ones there. We are, the HVAC system is working really good. In fact, we've got a a system really, uh, a team that's working on that to make sure that we have really good airflow that sits down there. Uh, We also want the kids to move. So the nice thing is they're not down in those classrooms. There's a lot of indirect light. There's just some classrooms down there that don't have direct light, just so you guys know. You guys will see that on the tour. Uh, when, you, when you guys are a part of that, that, that day, there's there. But they're going to be up and around, including into the annex, which is, has plenty of sunlight back and forth. So they're not in one classroom. They move around a lot, okay? So, so that's, and it is, we're, we're, what we have facility-wise is what we have facility-wise now. Um, why is sixth grade preview shorter than seventh grade preview? Uh, they might be a little bit shorter or on, on the, the time, but I'm telling you, you guys will see the ex- very similar and a lot of concentration specifically because sixth grade is new. But I haven't seen the agenda for both of those, so I wouldn't be able to speak to that right now. Um, there's a lot of training question around training, spiritual questions around worldview and identity. Uh, there are significant things that we're doing on worldview and identity. Uh, I, I could give you a list of those, but... Um, uh, if you have more questions about that, I, I will take a little bit more time there. Um, there's questions about, about uh, modular security, etc. Again, Eric is looking at uh, We have a full 
uh, um, overview of security in all these areas. Certainly, do we know that there's a little less security when you don't when you have concrete classrooms versus modulars? We understand that. We have multiple cameras. We're adding more cameras that are going to be at this campus, um, and so that you know, we have a, a number of staff members on this campus. Um, that are part of our Marshall program. And for those that don't know, our Marshall program uh, is a trained armed uh, group, okay? Uh, we do not designate or tell people who those are, um, but I can tell you that they are people and uh, Eric runs that training group. Uh, the group that's the task force will be pulling aside and specifically looking how can we, given our circumstances that sit here, continue to improve the safety and security here, okay? Um, Um, there's a question about we've seen significant increase in homework load. If you're, if you're seeing con con continuous increase in homework load, I would have a, a real conversation with your teachers and your principals. That's it. Is there going to be a basic progression? Yeah, but it shouldn't be so much that it's impacting your, your life in a significant way. Um, the teaching should be happening in the classroom, not at home. And so if that's not happening, you do need to be speaking to the teacher and telling them that that's happening in your house. And then if that is not alleviating that, please... Talk to Shelly or Vicki regarding that. Or if you're in middle school, one of the other administrators. Um, mentioned endowment. Can you talk more about an endowment? We will talk more about an endowment as we go. Uh, the way we're, we're looking at funding the new building is actually creating a full endowment. And we're actually going to, we want to pay for the cost of the building through an endowment instead of a direct loan. Um, but I can talk, if anyone wants to talk to me more about that individually, I can do that. Okay, this stopped moving again. I'm afraid to push something because then it's going to say um, sixth grade. The sixth grade will be able to participate in middle school sports, and will they be offered PE? Yes, they'll have PE. Yes, they'll have recess. And sixth grade will be able to, to be a part of cross country and track. Connor, is that it? Sixth grade, cross country and track. Yep, those are the two sports that they will be able to be a part of that's part of middle school. None, none of the other schools guys have sixth grade sports, so that's, those are the only two areas that we're able to compete with them on, okay? That's, correct, well, yeah, we possibly would we'll still be looking at sixth grade basketball coming back and using this gymnasium for that. Um, fifth grade and sixth grade graduation is, what are we doing with that, Shelly? You told me, but I don't remember. Different timings, we want them both to be special, okay, so that they have that, that conclusion area option. There we go. And they're not together. That was a question. Okay. All right. Um, if you have other questions, I'll, I'll stay here for, for a bit. We, if you do have the opportunity to stay and help us with chairs, this is going to be PE tomorrow because we want to continue to do PE. Um, if you could stay, anybody who might help stack these in stacks of nine for those that are tall. Okay, so let me pray. And again, we'll be up here. Uh, my leadership team will be up here if there's any other questions that I didn't answer. There might be a couple on here. I tried to do, do my best to go through those and answer those. Jesus, thank you for this evening. Thank you for um, this, this, just this group of parents and, that are partnering with us. Help us to continue to walk hand in hand. Help my leadership team especially to continue to have ears to hear that we uh, would be able to make the changes that are according to your heart, Father. We want to be in alignment with you. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys so much for being here tonight.